driving on autopilot. Uh, it shows uh, how reliable autopilot is. I'm gonna go now. It's from here. It's about 15 miles to the exit. Uh, so I'm gonna stay on autopilot here, and uh, whenever it reminds me to uh, touch uh, the steering wheel, uh, I will play with the volume button to turn off the notification, and I'm gonna just let the car drive until we get to the exit. is set to 75 miles an hour uh, but the traffic doesn't flow at that speed so uh, the car is going to drive whatever the flow of traffic allows In the center lane which makes it easier because on the right lane uh, you may have merging traffic uh, which autopilot is not perfect so you have to manually intervene at, at times uh, when there's merging traffic so it's not a good idea to uh, let autopilot on all the time on the right lane uh, but the middle and the left lane work perfectly fine uh, but you just have to make sure if you have autopilot on the left lane that you're fast enough with, uh, not to hold up any traffic. stop autopilot from nagging you can either uh, use the scroll wheel like changing the volume or you can actually touch the steering wheel and put some a little bit of bait on it uh, I prefer to use the scroll wheel take your eyes off the road uh, the, um, the warning uh, that you have to put your hands on the steering wheel uh, will uh, appear more frequently if you keep the eyes on the road this can be up to two minutes between warnings The nice thing about Tesla Autopilot compared to other aut autopilots uh, or other systems that are similar like uh, Lane Keep Assist is that it's not jerky at all. I mean it's not pulling hard, it's so smooth, all the curves are so smooth, it's uh, like you, uh, that a driver would be driving, maybe even better.
like a while ago, autopilot would uh, remind you every like 30 seconds or something to put your hands on the steering wheel. Uh, right now with the camera, it looks at your eyes and uh, it asked me how to actually touch the wheel. It didn't, uh, touching the scroll wheel this time didn't do it, it wasn't, wasn't enough. So it asked me to put the hands on the wheel, which I did. Uh, but back in the day it used to be every 30 seconds it would warn you if your hand is not on the steering wheel uh, But right now if uh, the camera sees that your eyes are on the road uh, It can take up to two minutes before you get the warning you take your eyes off the road, uh, it will give you a warning almost instantly. I mean, the easiest thing to do is just like to have your hand rest with a little bit of pressure on your steering wheel and it's not gonna um, warn you. Uh, but for this demonstration, I wanna have my hands off the wheel whenever possible uh, to show how reliable autopilot really is. Like my foot is also not on the uh, on the on the uh, accelerator on the brake. Uh, it's all done by the car. You always run the risk if you are in the left lane or right lane. Uh, if there's any exits or something uh, in the right lane, it won't take the exit. But uh, if you're in the left lane. Uh, and there's a left exit, uh, the car may exit to the left because it does not know what your intention is and it always tries to stay right. So if you're in a left lane and there's a left exit, it might actually take the exit. So the center lane is always the best bet uh, because uh, there's no uh, situations where you would have to interact unless there's like an accident in front of you uh, or, or something like that. Uh, no intervention needed, 11 minutes into the drive and uh, all I need to do is uh, turn the scroll wheel to stop the nagging every 1-2 minutes. is kind of slow right now because the map is filling in slowly that's not usual but the map data comes from the internet so if there is uh, some issues with the internet connection uh, it, the map will be slow you can always switch uh, to non uh, satellite maps which would be like this, then you don't have the issue with the internet connection. But once you switch to satellite, uh, it needs uh, a certain internet speed to build up the map on the screen. Another warning here. It's my typical commute, it slows down a lot, especially when I get closer to the office. Average speed usually on the way to work is probably around 50, 55 miles an hour, sometimes less, it depends. Which is actually good for efficiency. If you actually look at the current trip, uh, right now I'm averaging 246 watt hours per mile, which is very efficient for a 1000 horsepower SUV. 
that's the equivalent probably of 100 miles to the gallon on a gasoline vehicle. Probably more than that actually. That's uh, less than, that's about 4.1 miles per kilowatt hour. Which is probably 115 miles to the gallon equivalent. Like the warnings that you get on the autopilot first, it's just like a little message on the screen that says please touch the steering wheel or something similar. And if you don't touch it within like a few seconds, uh, it actually makes a noise. And um, eventually if you don't act at all, the car will stop. Because it thinks the driver is passed out or something and it will uh, stop because it, it doesn't think it's safe for you not to be in control on the car but I'm not gonna try this in the middle of the interstate of course we're already getting close to our exit now so this video is gonna end in a moment in like two or three minutes we're gonna be at the exit and uh, that's when I'm going to end the video because I will have to actually take control of the car because unless you have enhanced autopilot or if you have full self-driving, the car will not take the exit by itself. That's something um, as enhanced autopilot has it, which is like half the price of uh, full self-driving. But uh, in my opinion, uh, the full self-driving and the enhanced autopilot is still too expensive, especially for someone like me who doesn't keep cars for more than like two, three years. Um, it's worth it probably if somebody wants to keep the car for like 10 years, uh, it's definitely worth it. But if I ever need full self-driving, I will actually uh, go with the monthly uh, fee that you can pay to get full self-driving on a monthly basis. It's much cheaper, it's like 199 a month. So if you go on a road trip and uh, you want the car to do most of the driving, uh, just pay $199 for that month and then cancel it again. It's it's an option. Uh, I haven't paid for it yet. I may in the future. I don't know. It's interesting technology. And uh, yeah. Oh, that's where I touched the steering wheel. Okay. the exit 10 I'm exiting at exit 9 on I4 here to get to my office so absolutely no issues at all autopilot is very reliable like I said in the middle lane is the best is your best bet or the left lane if there's no left exits anywhere then the left lane works fine too but like I said, the right lane, you will have to interact uh, and uh, you will have to intervene in case there's merging traffic or something. Because the car will not automatically make space for someone. Okay, I'm going to take the car off autopilot now and I have to change lanes. There's also the auto lane change feature on uh, enhanced autopilot that you can use. But uh, again, you have to pay six grand, I think, for it. That's too much. All right, that's the end of the video. I'm in control now of the car. I'm taking my exit.